So welcome to the webinar and thank you for taking the time out on a evening, 8.30 is quite late. So thank you, thanks a lot. Let us begin by introducing ourselves. Uh, my name is Vishal, I'm a digital marketer and I'm going to be taking this webinar on three things you need to do to rank on Google. I'm an MBA from Indian School of Business and before that I did my engineering from IIT Roorkee and I have worked for over 20 years now with uh, KPMG, Deloitte and last few years as marketing consultant for startups and small businesses. And it will be great if uh, you guys can tell quickly, you know, maybe in the chat window you can quickly type out, uh, you know, what you do and what's your uh, goal from this webinar, what are you trying to achieve, that will be really helpful. You know, what, what, what you guys do and what are you looking to get out of this webinar. So that will help me, you know, tailor it to your needs. Okay, so Atul here uh, owns a IT consultancy and training company, great. And Atul, what are you looking to get out of today's webinar? Improve search ranking? Super. Okay, uh, Deepa is trying to understand this the marketing space, great. Okay, so uh, Ab Abbas from Dubai, okay, SMS marketing UAE, okay. Okay, so I can see there's a, there's a whole variety of people, there, there, there are quite a few, few entrepreneurs, uh, freelancers, as well as people who are working for uh, companies. And if I can see the common thread, it's about getting ranked higher in Google search so you can get more customers. Okay, yeah, right, Nidhi, I got that. Great. So, yeah, and there are some people who are looking for a career change into digital marketing, so that's good to know. Yeah, digital marketing is a growing field. Okay, great. So uh, uh, this is going to be an hour session and what uh, we are going to do is I'm going to uh, run you through the presentation, the webinar and uh, I'll try and answer questions as they come in uh, but uh, I have to be cognizant of the fact that the, the, the flow should not break so you know, we don't take our attention away from the uh, webinar. So what we will do is, uh, whatever questions I cannot do, uh, take while uh, I am doing this stuff, we will take towards the end of the webinar. So we have uh, time set aside at the end of the webinar to answer any questions that I can't take during uh, the webinar, okay? So I can see that you know there are some people who are quite new and some people who have a fair bit of understanding of uh, digital marketing or what you can achieve out of it. So that's great. So let's right, let's jump right into the webinar then. So three things you need to do to rank on Google. Okay. So what are those three things you can do? So what we are going to do today is the first thing we look at is how to find high quality keywords with low competition. And I know everyone uses Google Keyword Planner, which is a Google tool to find the keywords they should rank for. And I'm sure people uh, in, in today's webinar who, who have done uh, even a little bit of online marketing know what Google Keyword Planner is and I'm sure they have used it. And it's a great tool. There's no doubt about that. It's a, it's a great tool. It's, it's, is the first thing you need to use when you're doing your keyword research. But the problem with Google Keyword Planner is that everybody else in the world is using that, right? So while you get good knowledge, good understanding of the keywords, everyone else has the same 
information, right? So how do you go a little bit ahead of others? And that's what we'll, we'll do today, okay? So when I say high quality keyword and low competition, what it means is the keyword has traffic, which means people are using this, these terms to search on Google. And by low competition, I mean there are not a whole lot of websites which are trying to rank on these keywords on Google, right? So it's not going to be very, very hard for you to rank against these keywords. So the first part is you know finding the keywords that you want to rank on okay, above and beyond what you probably are already doing using Google Keyword Planner. And then the other part of SEO is so you know let, let me just take a couple of minutes to do to, to that. So one part of SEO is the keyword. So what do you want to get ranked for, right? The second part is how do you get ranked and, and again there are two parts to that. One is your page, so what you have written on the page itself, the content on the page and what have you done for other sites around the internet to link to your page or to your website. So when other sites link to your page or your website your search ranking goes up. So your goal should be to get large number of backlinks, links from other sites into your sites or your page. Uh, there are rules in terms of you know what kind of links you should get and all of that. But let's let's just keep in mind that we need to get links from other sites and we need to get good quality links, right? And we need to get we need to target the right keywords, right? So those are three things we'll cover today. Okay, and if uh, anyone has any, if you experience any issues in terms of uh, voice or not being able to hear or see the presentation, please let me know. So we can try to attend to that. So let's start by asking the question, okay, so what is SEO? So I'm sure some people here are pretty familiar with that, but it will be great if, if you can you know, just type away what you think is SEO or Great, right, right, Adul. So yeah, it's optimized for search engine. So you're trying to make sure that your page or your website can be found when somebody search, searching for it on Google. So if your site is about Hindi movies, you want to make sure that if somebody is searching for Hindi movies on Google, they find your site, right? And you can get some traffic to your site. And like I said, there are three parts to it. So one part is what are people searching for, right? So you want to rank high, but what do you want to rank high for? What search terms do you want to rank high for? And the second part is how do you rank high? Both are extremely important because because if you if your site is about Bollywood movies and you're ranking very high for, and, and you turn up on first day search result from you know, the best coffee shop in Bangalore, it's no good right? because you're not getting the kind of the right traffic to your site then. So you want to make sure that you rank for keywords which are relevant to your site or your page. And you also want to rank for keywords for which there's some traffic in Google. So keywords that people are using to search in Google. Okay, Vinit is not able to hear clearly. Okay, um, let me see. Is it better, Vinit? Okay, thanks. Great. Okay, so. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is make sure we, we understand the term that people use to search, the so relevant terms that people are using to search on Google, so there are enough people searching for the information and the right 
words, right? So both are important. Uh, yes, certainly. So everything. So when we talk of SEO, it's not it includes blog pages, it includes product pages, anything that is out on the web, uh, in the internet, right? Everything from your home page to blog pages to product pages, everything. Okay. And the second part is so when you write the content, how you write the content is important, and how many sites mean back to your page or your site is also important in the ranking, right? So let's let's see. So this is typically what happens. So you know, I search for online gifting on Google, and Google shows me this page, right? So the top here are ads. People are paid to display their ads here. This site is all ads, right? This is that, and everything under this orange box here is the actual search result, right? So this is. This is what uh, you call the organic search result or search result from Google, right? Everything else is paid for. And your goal is to search high, is, sorry, to rank high in this search result, right? So the first one here is IndianGiftsPortal.com and then ArtIsOnline.com. So you want to make sure your site ranks here. So if uh, if I'm not able to answer your question right away, uh, please hold on because I, I will uh, I'll try and bunch questions together in, in gaps. Okay. So we stay focused on the presentation as well. So let's look at why it's important to to rank high on Google search. And this is a chart that shows on the right hand side. On, on the horizontal axis, it's showing the average position. This, this is the search position, and one, two, three, up to ten. So, search position on page one. So, when you search for something, you get hundreds of pages of search results. So, on page one, if you rank one, how many people out of every hundred people who search, how many people end up clicking on the first search result? And you see here, it's about 18% of the people who search for anything end up clicking on the first search result on the page. If you are number two in search result, about 10% of people will, will click on your link. If you are number three, it's you know, around about 7%. If you are number four, you are looking at about 5% people clicking on your search result. If you are number 10 on first page, and getting on first page itself is pretty difficult, right? So if you make it to first page and you happen to be at number 10, your last result on the, on the first page, about 1% of people are going to, to click on it. Um, Okay, Anil wants to know if we can join through phone. Uh, usually there is a call-in number. I'm not sure if you'll get a call-in number, local call-in number though. Um, give me one sec. Let me just check one sec. Just one second. Huh? I'm just asking their technical support if, uh, if for the phone number. Okay. Okay. Uh, Anil, I'm trying to get answer to, to your question. Okay. So this is so this is what we are, I was telling you. If you rank number one. 18 out of 100 people will click on your link. If you rank number 10 on first page, just one out of 100 people are going to click on your link. 
So you see the dramatic drop in the click through rate, right? The number of people clicking on your link. Number one results gets twice as many clicks as number two and three times as many as number four. What it tells you is it's extremely important to rank in the top half of first page for the relevant keywords. If you're not there, you're not going to get much benefit. Okay. Again, these are you know, the average numbers, right? So depending on the keyword, depending on how you know what other pages are ranking, you might get more or less clicks than what you know this graph is showing. But this is the average number. So what it is telling you is if you're serious about online marketing, you've got to be on first page, top half of the search result. And with the advent of mobile, this is becoming even more important because on mobile phone, the screen size is so much smaller than your desktop, right? Which means people can see probably two or three of the top search results. And again, one or two of them may be just ads, right? So after that, maybe two or three, maybe two search results are visible to people. So if you're not in those top two search results, people have to scroll down to find, right? And that is crucial on mobile because people won't scroll endlessly, right? So if you're not ranking high, it's going to be real trouble getting traffic to your site, okay? So, okay, so if you want to rank high, how do you rank high? These are some of the factors. So Google uses over 200 factors to rank your page, to decide which page ranks where for a given keyword, okay? 200 factors. But what this chart is telling you, uh, showing you are the important factors, the big ones, right? So 28% of your ranking depends on on-page optimization factors and page content. What it means is, how you wrote the content, is the content having the right keywords, are the keywords repeated uh, enough times on the page, so you know, if you have the right keyword density, is your page having the right title, it, is it having the right meta title and those kind of stuff, right? 19% of your ranking depends on the site's inherent trust, okay, which is a very fuzzy thing, but it depends basically saying how trustworthy is your site? Is it reported for spam or not? What other kind of sites relate, link to you? Yeah, are, are other trustworthy sites linking to your site? If yes, then your site's you know authority goes up, right? Uh, so there, there are again multiple factors within each of these factors, okay? 15% is quality and quantity of page specific backlinks, which means Google gives 50%, 15 again, I mean, they, they, this is not given by Google, right? This is something that people have done research and estimated, okay? These are estimates at best. These are not Google numbers. Uh, okay, so there are 15% weightage is given to quality and quantity of page specific backlinks. Meaning, you let us say you create a product page, product description, or you write a blog, right? So that's a page. Now, how many are sites are linking to that page, and what kind of sites are linking to this page are are going to you know those two things determine 15% of your ranking, okay? So they have 15% weighted in your ranking. So we are today going to look at the 15% part. So how do you get more high quality backlinks? And it's not easy to get those links as we all know, right? So how do you get others to link to your site? Yeah. So how it works is, so this is your page. You created this page on your site, and then there are these other pages on other sites which link to your site. Okay, so this link is nothing but a hyperlink, right? So what you see HTTP colon slash slash you know www dot your site dot com slash your page, right? So that's the link. So this page has the link 
if I click on the link, it will take me to your page. That's what we mean by backlink or hyperlink, right? So all these pages are linking to your site, and that's the focus. How do you get these pages to link to your site? Okay. So the first question you need to answer is why will others link to you? Why should I link to your site? Right? There must be something in it for me. Right? What do I gain? If I link to your site, you gain, but what do I gain? Right? And it, it's surprising as if so many people don't address this question. Right? Because if you want somebody to link to your site, you have to give them something in return. If you don't give something in return, they are not going to link to your site. It's simple you know, give and take route that of life, right? And it's surprising how many times people forget this. So the first thing you need to answer is why should somebody link to me? Right? So your job as an SEO person is to show them the value of linking to your page. How does it help their site? How does it help their readers? How does it help them improve their ranking? Right? Even if your site might be ranked lower than their site. How does it help? So, what we are going to do today is look at what are the kind of keywords you should target, how do you find the right keywords, and then a couple of ways of getting others to link to your site. So, you, know, you, you, how do you find who should link to your site, and then how do you reach out to them, how do you get them to link, right? So, that's the question. So the first thing that I want to show you is a site called souvle.com. I don't know how many of you have heard of this. It's a site that helps with keyword research. Okay. The beauty of this site is, and we'll go there, but uh, and on this screen you can see uh, it shows you keywords that people are using on other sites, on, on all the other sites around the web, right? So important sites like Amazon. Uh, Bing, Google, YouTube, Wikipedia, what are people using to search related to the word that you enter here, right? If you go to Google Keyword Planner, you, you enter your main keyword, so let's say you are, you know, you're, you are creating an online gifting website, right? So you go there and like, to Google AdWords and say um, Keyword Planner and say enter online gifting, right? How to buy an online gift? Maybe that's a keyword people use to search for people, right? And Google will show you, you know, how many people are searching for that word and, you know, how many other related keywords are there that people are using to search. But you would not know what keyword people are using on Amazon or on, uh, and uh, to, to look for gifts or what keyword people are using on Bing, right, or on YouTube, right, to find gift ideas maybe, right? Suvle helps you with that. In one place you can see what everyone else is doing. Okay, so let me just give you a short demo of what. So this is suvle.com website. As as you can see, there is a box here, right here, where you will type in the word that you want to, you know, your keyword that you want to research. Now, if you don't know the keyword, maybe you just type the product name, right? And it will show you what everyone else is, you know, the, the keyword from other side. So let us say, uh, let's let me pick something from here, right? Uh, so okay, Atul has a consult, IT consultancy, right? So let's let's use some a keyword that that useful to us after. so let's say software development companies right so maybe I'm, I want to get my software developed and I'm trying to figure out which companies can help me develop software right? it's, it's a pretty generic system but as soon as I type the keyword, you can see Suvle started populating the key related keywords here. And it's pulling up this keyword. This is the Google. You can see the Google uh, uh, in the background. So these are the related keywords people are using on Google. 
these are the keywords people are using on Bing, these are the keywords people are using on Yahoo, this is what people are using in YouTube, right? So you can see uh, you can see what people are using on major search engines, right? In one shot. So that's good, right? But how do you make use of it? I don't, I mean, can you copy this thing individually? You can't, right? So they have this, you see this small arrow button here. If you click on this, it will download all the keywords. So it downloaded the list of keywords onto my computer. And then if I open this spreadsheet, you can see it's showing me the keywords. So one keyword each column, one row for each each site, and then one keyword per column. Okay, so it, it's not very you know user friendly download, but it's it's a it's a great help. So you can see the related keywords that are that are showing up. Uh, so, okay, so there's one keyword software development companies for sale. So maybe there's someone looking to buy a software development company. Yet. Okay. So top software development company. So this is Google. This is sorry, the first one is Google. This one is Bing. And you can see that between uh, Google and Bing and Yahoo, there's a difference between the keywords people use. Right. And that's the advantage of using Google. Because you can look across different search engines what people are using, right? And I typically find that when I use Google, I am able to find at least four to five keywords that I cannot find using Google Keyword Planner. And those four to five keywords are the ones that my competitors are also not finding. So nobody knows about them unless they go across all these sites and do it and which few people do, very few people actually go and research all the different sites. So immediately I gain at least four or five keywords which are related to my mother keyword, but no one else is trying to compete on, right? And then I can use those keywords and go to Google Keyword Planner or come here again and find more related keywords. So if I start with the mother keyword, I find four or five unique keywords which are not uh, easy to find for others. And then I use those four to five to find maybe another four, five or ten keywords related to those four, five. So I can create 10, 15, 20 keywords that no one else is optimizing for. And I can get pretty good amount of traffic out of that. Right? The other thing that very few people use is Google Trends. A Google Trends is another Google tool. Okay, just like uh, in a Google search engine, uh, you know, Google AdWords, and all of that. Google Trends shows you what is happening around the world in terms of search trends. What are people searching for? And you can see here some hot button topics. So they, currently we are on Google.com trends, and it's showing us U.S. Open is trending last seven days. You can see the search volume. MTV Video Music Awards and all of that, but so it's showing you what is a trending item on Google Trends. And if I enter the same stuff, software development companies, right? Google Trends will show me search trends for this and related keywords. So. Google Trends many times finds keywords which are really, really unique and you can't even find them in uh, Google's own keyword planner. So you can see the search term. You can see that the you know search volume for this term, software development companies has been going down steadily since 2005. 2005 is very you know, large comparative terms. I mean, the, the you know, the relative drop is huge. You can see in 2015. So it, what it's telling you is, if you optimize for this keyword, yeah, you will get traffic. But you know what? It, it's not the happening keyword. Uh, it, 
volume has been going down steadily, so it's not probably not a very important keyword right now, right? And then it shows you as you scroll down, it shows you some other related keywords, and it shows you, you no know, rising. You can see top keywords, and it is showing you the most important related keywords, and this. These numbers basically show you how important this position for a keyword 100 ranking means this keyword is most important keyword related to the term that I entered. And you can switch to rising and find which keywords are just becoming popular. Okay. Again, this, these keywords you might be able to find some of these keywords in. Uh, in advert planner, you uh, keyword planner, or you may not be able to find them, right? So you may or may not find them there, and most people don't find them there, okay? But the key thing here is, you know, you are able to find keywords which are now becoming popular that others may have missed because they didn't look at Google Trends, right? And you can find at least Again, four to five keywords which are really, really good compared to you know what you find in uh, keyword planner, and then the good old Google. So let me show you how to use Google search to find good keywords that you should optimize for. If I do the same thing, software development companies. So I come to Google and I search on Google with my main keyword or product name or whatever, a service offering and Google shows me search results and then you scroll down and as you scroll down to the bottom you can see searches related to the term you search Google with and you can find the related keywords here. Okay, You will not always find very unique keywords but what I have found is that 40 to 50 percent of the time, so you know, uh, two or three times out of uh, uh, four or five out of ten times, you will find keywords which are unique, okay, which you will would not have found otherwise. And and the beauty is that then I find these ten keywords and I say okay. Uh, software development companies, websites, and I say, okay, let me explore this keyword further. So I just click on this, and Google performs a search for this keyword. And then you can go down and see the keywords which are related to this new keyword now. And you can see that if I search with this keyword, I'm getting, again, a different set of keywords here. Right? So we can actually drill down a couple of levels and find some really interesting and important keywords that you cannot otherwise find using normal ways of doing your keyword research. Okay. So let's. Uh, Go back to our presentation. So we did that. Uh, we looked at Google keywords and uh, Google Trends is in Google. Okay, let's look at how do you get backlinks. And, and this is, you know, as Atul would uh, would testify. Uh, and I am uh, sorry, Atul, I keep picking on you, but. Uh, because you are uh, probably already doing something in this, uh, you know, to promote your company. Okay, uh, looks like Anil is not able to find the phone number. Um, uh, uh, let me, okay, Anil, let me just uh, ask. Okay, this is the, okay, Gita has shared the 
contact information. I'm not sure if uh, that will help him. Um, uh, let me just tell on support desk. Cannot find the number in the in there. Okay. Okay, Anil, I, I told um, support. I told uh, support to give you the number. Okay. Uh, so how do you find backlinks? And that's really really important for. Well, you know, it's, it's not really easy to get backlinks. And one of the things that I find extremely useful is a site called Scoopit. I don't know how many of you have heard of Scoopit. So let me just tell you what it is. Scoopit is a way for you to discover others' content. Okay. So you go to Scoopit, and let's say you are interested in digital marketing. So you go to Scoopit, and you create your own personal magazine around digital marketing, and you can start curating others content you you can start finding others content and collating them uh, you know putting them together in the form of an online magazine it's basically online page that you create okay and a lot of people come to scoop it and they, to find information so if I want digital marketing I go to scoop it I look at popular digital marketing pages and I can find lots of interesting articles there right and a lot, so some of these pages get a lot of traffic. They are very popular, and the the people who are curating them are very influential people. Um, they they probably have their own website, their own blogs where they are writing, and they are using Scoop, which is another way to you know um, reach out to their audience. So why you know if you look at it, you know it, for others to curate content and share with the world. So how do you use Scoop it to get back clean. and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so if you go to Scoop it, this is how it looks like. Okay, and then uh, I'll just log in. You log in, you create an account. It's free. You just create an account, and then you know my login is already there. So let me just log in, and I log in, and it shows me some information. Right? So I can see some trending things that are happening. You know. It shows me, you know, pages and things that I am, I might be doing. So, one of the things you can do is, if you want to find information, just click on the three, you know, the menu thing option, and then you go down and you go to digital marketing. Let's say, right? And I can see that so there are 148 topics. 148, you know, topic is basically a magazine or a page, right? That somebody is curating. 1.7 million views. You know, so many scoops. So there, are, there seem to be some very popular topics, right? So I say, what you do is you come here and click on recommended users. So these are users who are curating content on digital marketing, and you can see these are the people who are curating that. Okay. If you go to topic, you can see the pages that are popular that people are reading up, and you can see how many views the pages are getting. Okay, so pick a page that that has got good views and gets. So this is an, basically it's telling you that it's an active, very active page. Okay, so you go to that page. Okay. And you can see what this, you know, this topic is, and uh, so you can see what what this page is. And if you like this topic, then you can ask for a link from them. Okay. So you can see there, this thing has lots of views. And 122 today, so you know, a lot of people are coming here and uh, doing that. The other way to do that is click on the user and come here, and you can see that 
uh, the topic curated by the specific user and then you can go and email marketing so you can go on this page and see how this page is doing you know so it doesn't seem to be very active so you can you can pass this What is interesting here is this box, right? So in this box, you can actually suggest something to the author, the person who is managing this site. So what I do is I find a topic that is related to the blog or the page that I'm trying to promote, okay? And then I come here and I suggest my blog or the page that I'm trying to promote. So I enter the link here and I click on suggest. So I'm basically telling the author, so here the author is says push.com, this is probably a company and somebody is managing it for them. So I put the link and click on suggest to suggest. So I'm telling this guy please include my link in your scoop it here. If the person includes my link here, then I get a bad link from scoop it. But, that's just the beginning. What happens when I suggest is, within two days, 50% of the people will respond. And they will say, oh, I looked at your stuff, and if they like the article, right? So if they like what they see, your blog, 50% of the people will respond within two days. If I reach out to 20 people, 10 will respond within two days. Hey, I like your stuff, I included it on my scoop it. By the way, I want to, is it okay if I go ahead and share it on my own blog? And that's what we want. Yes, sharing it on, on Scoop, it is good, it goes on this magazine, it creates a backlink to your site, great. But when the author, so when this person here puts it on their own blog, shares your stuff on their own blog, it creates another backlink for you. So that's the second backlink and that backlink is going to be much more relevant and much more powerful for your ranking than the one that goes on Scoop it. So what happens is, every time I want to promote a blog, I come here, find someone, reach out to about 20 people, and within two days, I get 10 or 12 of them would have included it in the scoop it, and also on their own blog. So within 10 days, I'm going to get 10 to 15 high quality backlinks. And why I say high quality? Because Somebody who's curating content on a regular basis is either an authority as a company website or blog or something serious. They're serious about generating online content and generating traffic online. So they're seriously pursuing this work. They're, and their own blog and their own site already have some traffic coming in, okay? So when you get a backlink from their site, you get ranking. And the bonus is the traffic, because what happens when, when they push, when they publish your article or your blog on either either on school or on their own blog is somebody is going to end up reading it, right? And when they read and they like it, they are going to click and click through to your site and you get a traffic. Suppose 100 people see the scoop it post where your article was included, right, the scoop it page. Out of that, 20 people like your stuff interesting and they'll click and go through to your site. So you get 20 free visitors and you also got a link. So what happens is every time I do this on scoop it, I get 10, 15 good high quality links and I get 100, 200 people visiting my site who would not have otherwise come to my site. And when they come to my site, I can get them to subscribe to my newsletter, you know, I can get them to download this, you know, some free giveaway, capture their email ID, 
I can hook them up with on with more put content so they keep coming back to us. So it not only helps you get good backlinks, it actually sends a lot of traffic to your site. So that's one way. Then it's very effective and most and the beauty is that most people don't use they don't even know about scoop it so don't they don't use scoop it uh, and even those who know and use scoop it don't use it for backlinking so there you have a wide open field there to get backlinks from scoop it is very effective how long it will remain is effective i don't know but it's for for now it's really really effective and you can also create your own magazine so you can create your own stuff and when you create so the, why do I say you create your own magazine? Because when you curate your own magazine, what you do is you start including content from other all these people. So if you're reaching out to some someone on Scoop It, make sure you include their content on your magazine. So if you include their content in your magazine, you're creating an obligation on them to include your stuff in their magazine, right? Give and take, right? So you make sure you are you create a magazine where you are Creating some others' content, you're including their content in your magazine, and you're creating some, you know, obligation on them. So when you reach out to them, they they share your content in your magazine and their website. Okay, so that's that's one. Uh, this is really really easy and very effective. So like I said, 30 to 50 percent acceptance in two days is actually closer to 40 to 50 percent. The one thing you have to be really really careful about is don't spam. Okay. So if somebody ignores, don't go after them and keep suggesting the link, you know, every day. Suggest it once and then back off. Okay. And build a relationship. So you find some influential people, you find some people who have a lot of uh, who have a topic that gets a lot of views in your related area. Start getting their content in your stuff and then building relationship. You can get more and more coverage on their uh, magazine on, on their blog. Right? When you suggest something, they take it. Okay. The other thing is uh, getting a link from journalists, and this one is really cool because you know we all try to get coverage in magazine, newspaper, blah blah blah, doing PR because we think if somebody writes about you, you know, you'll get a lot of traffic. And if, you know, uh, you know somebody from Inc.com, you know, an author on Inc.com writes about, you know, your company providing some solution or some service or some product, right? Thousands of people are going to read, so you are going to get a lot of traffic. And the link from Inc.com is going to be highly valuable for search ranking, right? But how do you get that? It's not easy. Uh, the, the, the traditional way is you reach out, you find who is an influential blogger or journalist in your zone or your area, reach out to them, you know, start following them on Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, start building relationship and then slowly over a period of time you build trust and then you can start pitching your story, right? So you build relationship, then you pitch your story, hey, this is my story, you want to write about me, okay? It's a long run out, it works well, but it takes a lot of time and effort. Okay. But there's a shorter and faster and more scalable method because in the the method that everyone says is you know you can maybe build a relationship with five of them, you know, five bloggers, ten bloggers, one beyond that. How do you scale it? So let me show you how to scale it. Okay. And there's a site called help or reporter dot com. A short form for that is H A R O H A R O. It is help a reporter out is how it started off with. It's called helperreporter.com. Okay. This is the site where journalists go when they are looking for an expert for a story. So think about it. So somebody is trying to write a story for Wall Street Journal on startup scene in India. Now obviously the, the, the journalist, the reporter doesn't know much about India startup scene or doesn't know enough to write the story. So they are looking for experts who might know about startups in India, right? But how do they, do they find experts? Just as it is hard for us to find reporters, it's hard for reporters to find experts, right? And reach out to them. So 
helpareporterout.com is sort of an exchange between journalists, reporters and experts. So you register on the site as an expert, a journalist registers on the site as a journalist or uh, you know, reporter. And when they need some information, they need some experts, journalists will put out a query, a request. Hey, I need expert in this area, this is the story I'm doing, I need expert, please share your story. And you will get that in your email, in your inbox, okay, the email that you will use to register with Haro. So what happens is, you get the email and then you respond to them. So you see something that impresses you that you should respond to. So you register as an expert in your area, you get the query, you respond to the query. If the reporter likes it, he's going to publish it. And when they publish it, guess what? They're going to usually get a backlink to your site. So they'll ask you, okay, which page, which page do you want me to link to? or you know which Twitter profile you want me to mention and you know, which LinkedIn profile you want me to mention. So depending on if you are a freelancer, you want to link to your LinkedIn profile or a Twitter mention. You know, if you are a company, your business if, or, or you are helping other, you know, your client, you want their site or a specific page to get a link. So you respond accordingly. Okay. So I'll show you what how it happens, right? So uh, So this is the site, helpareporterout.com. You come to the site, okay? You sign up free. The site is totally free. You sign up free, fill up the information, submit, and you are set up as an expert, okay? So on the next page, they'll ask you. So here, they're just asking basic information. When you submit, they'll ask you for, you know, which, which area, you, you know, whether you want to register as an expert or, or, or a journalist, and then which area you want to register as an expert in. Okay, so you might say technology, you might say marketing or whatever. Okay? And when that happens, you become an expert and then you start receiving queries, okay? And you will get queries from big sites, small sites, blogs, small blogs, big blogs, freelance journalists, you know, you know, journalists who are on payroll of Wall Street Journal or CNN, all kind of people, okay? And your job is to respond to as many as you can. So what you, need, you do is you block out maybe half an hour or 20 minutes or 15 minutes in a day to respond to our queries, okay? And what you'll notice is over a period of time, those queries are pretty repetitive. So your answers to them are going to be pretty much the same. Uh, with little bit adjustment. So right, initially it will take you some time to craft your response to the query. As you go along after you have answered 10, 12 of them, you you realize that you don't need to really create individual responses to all of them, right? You can start, you know, customizing your canned response, so to say, okay? So what happens is, every day, three times a day, you'll receive an email that looks like this on the left-hand side, okay, or on the right-hand side. So and there are two different kinds of emails. So one is for business and finance, the other is for high tech, high queries. So there, if you're registered as a business and finance expert, you, you get all these queries. So you get an email with all these queries that you see here, in, below index, uh, you know, whatever, 15 queries. Sometimes you get five queries, sometimes you get 20 queries. And so you read through the queries, if there's any query that sounds interesting to you, you want to respond to it, you click on it, and if you click on it, it'll open up as, you know, so you, you it'll take you to the detail section in the same email, and this is how it'll look like. So you can say, okay, this is my, so it tells you who sent the query, the name of the uh, reporter, so you can see there's a reporter from ZDNet here in high tech query. And this is the query I'm putting together. We'll be talking about customers or visitors interacting with their online presence through mobile devices like phones, smartphones, tablets. So Ivan is doing a story on, on, on mobile uh, online marketing and he wants to hear stories of companies which have, which have done something uh, and have some data or some story to share around that. And so if you like, if you 
Read this if you want to respond to it. There will be a, uh, a field called email and with a, some query something something written at helperreporter.net. So, if you click on this, it will open up a response box like this. Okay? You cannot send a direct email. You can't send a hit reply. You will never get a direct email ID of the reporter. Okay? So, the email is a threaded discussion going on between you and the reporter. Okay? So if you click on this email ID here, it opens up a, it will automatically create a response email for you, a new ma message. You, in the subject, you put the title of the query. So you'll, if you are responding to this query, you will say, you know, mobile marketing technique in the subject. And then you enter your response and your signature where you will put, you know, the page that you want link to or the Twitter profile and all of that, and then send it. And typically in a day, you will get three emails, and you can get three or three, you know, two or three, uh, you know, queries that you will be interested in. So you respond to two or three queries a day. That corresponds to 60, 70, you know, uh, 22 days, you know, in a working days in a month, you will get like uh, uh, 22 into Three is like sixty-three, right? Sorry, uh, sixty-six. So you get sixty seventy opportunities to respond every month. Okay, and if you write good response, in my experience, you can get about you know ten percent or twenty to fifteen percent of uh, journalists will, will will actually publish you. So you are looking at you know every month you can get five to ten stories published about you and a link back to your site. All free, all, you know, and over a period of time, very little effort because you are basically rehashing the same message over and over again. But you, are, you keep getting lots of links every month. I mean, if, if you scale it out to the page and you keep getting five or six from this, and these links also send a lot of traffic because these are blogs with a lot of traffic already there. You'll also get a lot of traffic, not just backlinks. Okay. So, okay. So, any questions? Uh, I am done with what I wanted to do. Sorry, I, I I didn't answer too many questions in between because I wanted to cover uh, the topic. So any questions? Shoot now. So Anil, do you have any question? Suresh, Naikat, anybody? Okay. Pandini has a question. Aha, okay, very good question. Generally people people click the ads or the genuine search results. So here's the answer. You'll be surprised. Out of hundred clicks generated on Google, 90 clicks are on the search results and 10 clicks are on the ads. If you look at Google's financial, you'll see Google making billions of dollars from ad click ads. Okay? So you'll think there are a lot of people clicking and yes, there are a lot of people clicking, but that's because there's so many people searching. But if you look at, at clicks on the ads in terms of the total clicks generated by Google, Search results capture ninety percent of them. So, if you are serious about online marketing, getting high on search results is an extremely important part of that. So, uh, okay, I think it's also about time. It's nine thirty. Okay, there's another question. Yeah. Okay. So, there's a, a great question. Does big organization also follow this approach? Sandeep, big organizations don't follow this approach because they follow a very structured approach. If you if you work in a big organization and you go to your boss, you know, marketing manager and say, hey, this is what I'm going to do, he's going to be okay, does it work? 
where's the data? Okay, I don't want people to feel we have, you know, their, their egos kept coming to play. I'm big. How, you know, why should I go and request someone? People will be requesting me for links, right? And that is why smaller companies, the smaller blogs come up. If you look at the professional websites, they are not big companies, but they outrank big companies on, on, on relevant keywords. And that's because they are able to do things that big companies cannot or don't even think, right? And how do you think I found all this information, right? Because as a small company, you keep thinking, you don't want to spend a lot of money on Results. So you keep experimenting, trying things, and see what works, and and you find out things that work and things that don't work, right? So, big company nobody does that. Okay, so big companies will follow typical. So, if you work for a big company and you go to Google Keyword Planner or you know one of the paid tools that are out there, do you think? Uh, yes, yes. So they are interested in digital marketing. So they. Their approach is different, right? They do the same stuff, their approach is different. And the difference is, so they'll go to Google Keyword Planner and get the keywords, right? They'll go to paid keyword tool and get the keywords. And then they'll put a lot of people, they've got a lot of money, so they'll put a lot of people to, you know, to create patterns. So if I am, for example, say IBM and I could do, and, and I create an article on cloud computing, okay? I can get my PR. So I've got a big marketing department where the PR has, has direct, you know, connections with journalists and bloggers, you know, I, and I can reach, they will reach out and make sure that my, uh, you know, new article gets uh, covered by some blogger or some news, you know, some journalist, right? They're big. They've got money. They've got a lot of people. So they'll do the traditional stuff, which is using money and resource to get out, to get the links, okay? And also big companies have domains or websites which are already authoritative sites. So Google already thinks IBM.com is very, a big authority. So if I put something on, on IBM.com, it's likely to rank higher simply because it is on IBM.com, right? But if I put it on VishalShivaswa.com, it's not going to rank higher because VishalShivaswa.com is nobody for Google, right? So the approach you use is very different there, right? And the put you'd use as if you're not an IBM.com or, or Apple.com is very different. You don't have enough money, you don't have enough people, you don't have enough, enough connections, right? And your website doesn't have the authority. So you, you have to do things that others won't do so you can get those backlinks and, and outrank them, right? Because at the end of the day, if you're also a cloud, let's say Sundeep is cloud computing expert. Uh, and you have your blog, right? You're competing with IBM's cloud blog and uh, Apple's cloud blog and everything else. So how do you rank? You rank by doing things that these guys can't do or won't do. And you still get back links and get to rank for the keywords that those guys won't even fight for, right? See, if a, if a keyword has 100 people searching, IBM is not interested, but you might be interested. You, you will put together 20 such keywords that 2,000 people searching, you rank number one on that, uh, you got 300 people wasting your website, your blog, right? IBM is not interested in 300 people keep coming to a site. You say, you know, I get 100 million people coming and 300 is what? Nothing. So I want to rank for cloud computing is the only keyword I want to rank for because 10,000 people are searching for that, right? So that's the difference. Okay, guys, uh, have a great night. Uh, thank you for joining me and uh, wish you a great week ahead. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you, Cordinia. Bye.